the fantastic metamorphosis taking place in the growing, processing, and packaging of foods key to concepts such as fresh frozen, cured, dehydrated, freeze-dried, reconstituted, and others too numerous to mention, is not only changing the physical aspect of our daily bill of fare, but is making our meals more interesting, appetizing, nutritious, healthful, and better tasting as well. Even I've been repackaged, and I like it. The advent of the space age, the Gemini, and now the Apollo program pose new challenges. Innovations in packaging and processing were necessary to create for the astronauts the bill of fare that was as exciting, nutritious, and delicious as a breakfast at Brennan's, a luncheon at 21, dinner at Perino's, or an after-theater snack at Sardi's. The inauguration of this special food program resulted not only in innovative and tasty space goodies, but its overall impact is well on its way to changing the eating habits of millions and millions of Earth people like you and me. Now, although the food program's emphasis was on meals in space, mealtime as we know it took on different dimensions, due primarily to the fact that an orbiting spaceship moves from night to day in 90-minute cycles, and the workload of an astronaut, like that of a housewife, being almost a continuous one, space eaters are all loners. Other considerations involved the volume and weight of a quantity of foods requiring no refrigeration or cooking. Convenience foods that would provide each astronaut with a daily intake of approximately 2,800 calories for a journey of up to 16 days in space. Experience gained during the Mercury and Gemini missions in the preparation, handling, and consumption of space foods provided valuable background in the development of our menu for an astronaut. Each astronaut is furnished 1.4 pounds of foods per day. Its nutritional content is balanced to provide 20% protein, 62% carbohydrates, and 18% fats. Its caloric distribution is 17% from the protein, 51% from the carbohydrates, and 32% from the fats. All food and beverage packets for one meal are placed in aluminum overwrap packages and each overwrap has a color-coded tab to designate the meals selected by each astronaut. Both the food and hygiene components are stored aboard the Apollo spacecraft in fireproof containers. Like you and me, astronauts savor foods that retain their original color, taste, and texture. A wide variety of nutritious foods, over 50 different items, is selected and prepared and processed. Each is selected to please taste, and satisfy appetites. And since their peak physical condition and mental attitudes requires balanced nutrition, the foods are personally chosen within certain limitations by the astronauts themselves. So, how did we create our menu for an astronaut? Easy. We asked them what they like to eat, and they told us. What we're interested in uh, finding out is uh, what do you like to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Well, for breakfast, I like cornflakes with strawberries and cream. Lots of sugar, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, some crisp bacon, a couple of eggs sunny side up, some raisin toast, blackberry jam, butter, and, well, of course, a fresh glass of orange juice. <laughs> mm. For lunch, there I like a little more variety. Perhaps uh, some chicken soup. A hamburger medium well, a salad with Italian dressing, some iced tea with lemon, and for dessert, uh, half of a grapefruit. Well, to tell the truth, I like just about everything, don't I? I know what I like. What? Ice cream, chocolate bars, and soda. Well, then we need a very big space capsule to make room for the fattest little astronaut in the world. <laughs> <laughs> right, ma'am? That's right. Now, don't talk, just eat. Actually, cooking's a real pleasure in this house. John's a good eater. He likes salmon salad, chocolate pudding, spaghetti with meatballs, rib roast. Well, just about everything, right? <laughs> right. 
We have a lot of different choices, but you'd be surprised at how many of the astronauts, like you and me, like to eat the same kinds of things. So our task became easier. Food and nutrition experts, farmers, scientists, and doctors from all 50 states, plus many foreign countries as well, became involved. And our menu for an astronaut quickly developed both as a food venture into space and as a brand new concept of food programming for Earth people as well. Here at the Whirlpool Laboratory in Benton Harbor, Michigan, foods for the astronauts are processed and carefully packaged by experienced food production people in space food kitchens where purity and cleanliness reign supreme. In these clean rooms, as they are so aptly called, the selected foods are cooked and simmered then fast frozen to retain their taste and nutrition, and finally, freeze-dried to remove moisture. There are two basic types of freeze-dried foods in our bill of fare. Rehydratable, or food that must be reconstructed with water, like chicken salad and butterscotch pudding. And uh, solid, bite-sized cube foods, which are eaten directly from the package. Toasted bread, fruit cereal cubes, and cheese and crackers. Strawberries and cornflakes? There's a tasty dish. First, the sugar-coated cereal is mixed with freeze-dried strawberries and other wholesome ingredients. Then the mixture is pressed into cubes of a specific size and weight. Hand dipping in a special gelatin coating designed to hold crumbs to a minimum is the next step. After which, the cubes are freeze-dried and placed in containers for interim storage. Each freeze-dried item has its own spacesuit of a four-ply package manufactured by Whirlpool. The inside layer is food compatible. That is, it doesn't affect quality or taste. The second layer provides overall burst strength. The third acts as a vapor barrier, preventing the seepage of gas and liquids. And the fourth, or outside layer, is heat sealable. In addition, the total package is automatically vacuum sealed, which assures against bursting even in a complete vacuum. Quality control, you bet. All space food is checked and rechecked innumerable times daily, and to make certain that the appetite and taste appeal remains tops, the foods are tested by a time-proven method, eating. Since astronauts do not have the time to either peel or squeeze a fresh orange, Scientists in Winter Haven, Florida, developed a process that has transformed their daily vitamin C requirement into rehydratable crystals. And here in sunny Florida is where it happens. The concentrated orange juice containing 58% orange solids is brought from the refrigerated warehouse and dumped into a stainless steel hopper where a rotating blade chops up the lumps of the concentrate that remain frozen. The liquid concentrate is then pumped at a measured rate through a continuous beater which whips it into a foam the consistency of marshmallow cream. All important measurements on the drying equipment are recorded and controlled automatically on Foxborough instruments. The switches for the various parts of equipment are centralized on the control panel. Nitrogen and a small amount of protein whipping agent are injected into the flow of concentrate and beaten to form a fine textured foam. This casting box spreads the foam onto a four foot wide stainless steel drying belt which travels at 150 feet per minute. The foam is transferred into the casting box after which it flows onto the traveling belt. The front of the casting box has an adjustable gate that controls the thickness of the film on the belt. The temperature of the foam, as well as other characteristics, are continuously monitored to produce a uniform product. Periodically, a sample of the foam is filled into a standard volumetric container and weighed on a balance to determine its density keeping it within the optimum limits to produce a uniform product. The thickness of the film is measured periodically with a rotating paint gauge. This is a stainless steel cylinder with a cam section, which indicates the thickness of the film on the belt. The machine is 200 feet long, and telephone connection is provided to keep contact between the crews at each end. The harvesting end is located in a low humidity room to keep the dry product from picking up moisture. The dried sheet is stripped off the stainless steel belt with a stainless steel knife. The sheet itself, which is stripped off while it's still slightly warm, is of a plastic consistency. After passing through a chilling section, the sheet hardens, becomes crispy, and is readily broken up into flakes. The flakes are milled to yield powder of the proper size. 
The pneumatic conveying equipment ends in a stainless steel hopper used for filling the drums. A plastic bag is used in this shot to demonstrate the appearance of the product, which normally is filled directly into fiberboard drums. The drums are multi-walled and contain a sheet of aluminum and a sheet of polyethylene, as well as fiberboard to protect the product against moisture and oxygen. Several other types of containers are used in addition to the fiber drums. One pound vacuum sealed cans containing desiccant bags are the common form used by the Quartermaster Corps. And here, ready to be consumed in the NASA drinking pouch used in the Apollo program, are the Florida orange crystals, a product about which the astronauts remarked had more of an adult taste than the very sweet citrus flavored synthetic powders previously used. Scientifically planned convenience food have almost become a way of life in our rush around world. Space flight innovations have already given us a new type sandwich spread, many dehydrated soups and salads, a nutritious candy called, you guessed it, space sticks, delicious crystallized orange juice, a new form of rice, plus innumerable other tasty products. Yes, people, whether they be on Earth, beneath the sea, or in outer space, enjoy well-prepared, tasty, nutritious foods, whether it be breakfast, lunch, dinner, or at snack times, and to satisfy and please them all is the name of the game. There's no end in sight. The length and breadth of our fantastic food adventure is growing and growing, and although it is key to space exploration, it is rapidly spreading its pleasures through innovative spin-off developments in our Earth-oriented foods, making them tastier, more nutritious, and above all, more convenient for us to prepare. You can be certain that future ventures to Venus Jupiter, Saturn, or what have you, while providing a tastier choice from our menu for an astronaut, will also please our palates as well. <laughs>